we live well or badly. Sometimes we look around and say it's really beautiful. But we always only notice the beauty around us, we never think about ourselves. It's like it's always been here. But our story is just as amazing as those around you. So much has happened during this time. Before I move on to the video, I want to ask you a question. Let's say you are watching a movie. And the leader always finds a way out of this difficult situation, even in the most difficult moments. After a while you get bored and turn off the TV. But the current story contains more difficult situations. It would probably be ridiculous if you had a screenwriter write a story where the lead always gets out of difficult situations somehow. But here is a movie that the best screenwriters cannot write and the best directors cannot direct, I will tell you today. The good thing is that we are all the leading roles. If you remember, I told you about the Big Bang Theory in another video. In that video, I talked about the war between particle and antiparticle, and the one billionth difference in that war, you, me, and everything else was formed. After that, things got even more complicated. If you haven't watched it, I suggest you watch it. It all started at that very moment. Then there were clouds of gas and dust scattering around. About 13 billion years ago, clouds of gas and dust began to be pushed together by gravity. These clouds collapsed. The stars we see today erupted from these collapsing clouds. In the following process, the Milky Way took its present form after a long time. 8.5 billion years from now, something happened again. Interstellar clouds of gas and dust collapsed due to the shock wave of the supernova. The cluster continued to shrink due to the collapse. As it shrunk, it warmed up and became a primeval star. The primeval star began to rotate, creating a strong magnetic field that forced the gas streams away. The precipitated gases spun faster and flattered. The star got hot enough to trigger nuclear reactions, and the sun began to shine. The sun began to spin clouds of dust around it. The swirling clouds of dust merged and grew. The merging clouds of dust formed the primordial world. After that, the meteor showers began. And for a very long time. Then a planet called Thea crashed into the Earth. Luckily, the Earth began to revolve around the sun at the right angle. Then this planet Thea began to rotate by being caught by the Earth's gravity. And so the moon as we know it today was formed. But the world was still not a place to live. The world needed water. Scientists recently discovered something interesting while examining some meteorites that fell to Earth. Salt. But there was something more interesting in the salt. It was moving. It was a drop of water. In other words, meteorites brought the water necessary for life to the world. But despite all this, there was still no life on Earth. It needed a trigger and it literally came true. In fact, there are various theories about how life came to be. Some theories claim that life came to Earth from outer space, in which case we are all aliens. In my opinion, this is taking the easy way out, because this is not answering the question, but glossing over the answer. Looking at the structure of the world at that time can really give us an idea. Even though the world had an atmosphere at that time, there was little or no oxygen in the world. The world was largely covered by oceans, and in these oceans were many small organic substances that we call prebiotics. And based on this information, we can claim that life began in water. 3.8 billion years ago, the world was a strange place indeed. It has been 750 million years since the world was formed. We now had an atmosphere. We had water filled with chemical compounds. All it took was a trigger. About 3.8 billion years ago, lightning struck the water full of chemicals at the right time. Atoms of chemical substances joined in an array and formed a clump of genetic material. This clump of genetic material then copied itself and began to multiply. Luckily, an oily substance enveloped this genetic material and the primitive cell was formed. Thanks to the genetic material inside, they ensured reproduction and thus survival. It went on like this for 2 billion years. But then, by accident, the two cells fused and everything changed. The cell here carried two different genes. I want to talk about an important issue here. As cells reproduce, they pass on their genes to another. But it also transmits in mutations. After a while, these differences multiply so much that separate species are formed. But for more than a billion years, this division continued normally. That cell began to divide and differentiate. Three billion years later we were a primitive fish. Meanwhile, organs such as the eye and brain began to evolve slowly. But then a deep water fish chased us into shallow waters. 
This was a very important step. There was little oxygen here. And it was close to the ground. Natural selection takes over again and another miracle happens. We begin to breathe air. This is a long procedure that takes millions of years. And we can still sometimes see traces of this primitive procedure. Although we do not have gills, some people are sometimes born with gill marks. Convulsions like hiccups are the inheritance of these organs. Thanks to our breathing air, we can now live both in the water and in the dry. But it's pretty hot outside. We continue to evolve over millions of years to adapt to it. In this period, we are a reptile called Cassinaria. Our lineage is no longer in danger of extinction in a lake, but nature always has surprises for us. Meanwhile, our brain is developing further, our fingers and other organs are starting to adapt to the environment quickly. There is a price to be paid for not extinction, and that price is to have many competitors on land. To counter this situation, we started to develop stronger jaw muscles. While everything was going on as usual, nature was at our door with a surprise. In Siberia, the magma layer came to the surface as a result of the separation of the Earth's crust. The toxic gases that came to the surface kept the heat into the atmosphere, and the temperature began to rise incredibly. We were one of the rare species that managed to survive this period. But when we got out, we encountered something frightening. With dinosaurs. Their ancestors were better adapted to the environment during this period. Evolution rewards the well-adapted, not the strong. We are now an 11 centimeters furry creature named Ectininian. Dinosaurs, eating everything they came across, were the sole rulers of the world for millions of years. In this period, the living things that are our ancestors were in great panic and danger. Their species could have been exterminated by the dinosaurs. Those with weak senses were hunted by dinosaurs. The strong survived. Thus, natural selection once again continued to reward those who adapted to the environment by continuing their life and lineage. And finally, if we have good senses today, it's partly because of the dinosaurs. There was no question that the dominance of the dinosaurs would be shaken after that. But nature always had a surprise. About 66 million years ago, a giant meteorite fell near the Gulf of Mexico. This was the beginning of a new and challenging process that would continue for a long time. The dust and ashes rising from the fires block the sun. Temperatures are dropping and living things are disappearing. Dinosaurs take their share from this difficult situation. Dinosaurs are hungry and big creatures, but they don't have such a chance because most of the living things and plants have disappeared. Evolution reminds us of the golden rule again and rewards the adaptable, not the strong. We're lucky because we're small, so we don't need food as big as dinosaurs. We can survive on small foods such as insects. During this period, we were a creature called Purgatorius and we were living by eating insects. If we don't reproduce by laying eggs today, we owe it to the dinosaurs. We raised them ourselves to protect the eggs from the dinosaurs. After that, this little creature began to spread to the continents. It continued to evolve in the continents it went to. We re-evolved to live in trees 56 million years ago. Our name is Altiatlasius, and this evolution took about 9 million years. In the next period, we continued to evolve for millions of years to adapt to new lives, and eventually we evolved into a primitive-like creature. About 3 million years ago, we were a creature called Artipithecus ramidus. This creature did what no primate had done before. He walked on two legs. This was the first spark of a new civilization. Although this new feature gave us the ability to reach food more easily and spot enemies earlier, it also had many side effects. A narrower pelvis meant earlier birth and a more immature baby. Now, this new feature of ours would allow us to open the door of a truly new civilization. After that, we continued to evolve and develop rapidly. We tamed fire, started living in groups, and continued to evolve. Now we are undoubtedly the sole owner of the whole world. So what happened? What has happened is that we are the first and only species of all living creatures to try to understand the universe. Of course, as far as we know. It really feels weird that we're here as a result of so many coincidences. If you call the story I'm telling nonsense, I would like to remind you that you came into existence by chance. Humans produce billions of sperm and egg cells. For you to be born, your parents had to be born to their parents. So that's a pretty optimistic one in a million estimate. Imagine who would have been born in your place. Mozarts, Einsteins, and who else? There is something we must accept. Our civilization is developing rapidly and those who support this development make their names in history. To be the best version of ourselves at what we can do. 
At the end of the day, most of us won't be launching rockets into space like Elon Musk. And we won't be billionaires either. There are many people in history who are rich but do not benefit civilization. Or being strong. But on the contrary, we often come across it. When I hear the names of scientists who still have difficulty such as Tesla, Darwin, Galileo, I thank them sincerely. And I think it's a truly unique feeling to be loved so much by other people. I'm pretty sure there are millions of science lovers like me. It can save our civilization not by being rich or powerful, but by being smart and moral. We cannot all do what Tesla or Darwin did. But if I manage to be better every day than I was the other day, then I would have indirectly contributed to civilization. Because this support is not necessarily about splitting the atom. Being tolerant of people, respecting them and nature develops our civilization. Because there are too many creatures in human form but far from being human.